Welcome to Victorious Living with Pastor Charles Cowan. Now let's join Pastor Cowan and the congregation of Faith is the Victory Church. This is Victorious Living. How many of you have ever heard the phrase, you better get your life in order? Most of the time when you hear that phrase, it's making reference to the, like Jesus is coming tomorrow. You better get your life in order. And, uh, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot more that goes with that. So tonight I want to share with you in putting your life in God's order. Putting your life, putting our life, putting your life, our life to, to, uh, in order so that what God has planned for us here in this life on this earth so that those things can come to pass in our life. When our life is out of order, it hinders and keeps those things that God has planned for us away from us. Now, God doesn't keep, it, keep, it, uh, keep those things away from us because Jesus died to bring, him, bring that to us or those things to us. But when my life is not in the order that is uh, described and outlined and explained to us in the scriptures, then that disorder, out of order, can hinder uh, the blessing of God from coming into your life. So putting your life in God's order. Now, you know, a lot of times, this is, I think this is a true state. Most of the time, people, we as people, some people and not all people, they have their own idea of what it means to put their life in order. And so that means then that things that strike their, 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 what they like, uh, what they enjoy doing, uh, sometimes they narrow putting their life in that order instead of the whole order of God's word. So here's the question, what does it mean to be in order or to have things in order where your life is concerned? Probably if I ask you the question tonight, how many of you got your life in order? Probably all of us would hold up our hand maybe. Yeah, doing good, got it right, got it in order, you know, and those kinds of things we we would say we did. But how many of you have learned that in your life, all of us that we have learned in our life, that not all things are necessarily in order on a day-to-day basis, a week-to-week basis, a month-to-month basis, or or even a year-to-year basis. So what does it mean to be in order or to have things in order? Order is an arrangement. All of you got an order at your house. You know, you you have some kind of order in your home. You like to keep your home in some order some arrangement that that you deem uh, it necessary or you deem that's the way you want it to be. So we all got an order. You get out of here on the highway and there's an order that's been established by uh, law, you know, uh, enforced by, uh, by law keepers, <laughs> by, by authorities. And so order... When you, when you drive on the right-hand side of the road, you're driving in proper order. If you're driving on the left-hand side of the road, you are in disorder, and you're out there on dangerous ground. So when, when things are in disorder, there are doors that are opened where Satan has access to our life. Just like the car's coming at you and you're going at them, you have put your life in danger. Why? Because you are or were out of order. And so order is the arrangement of things in our life, be it in the natural life, this natural physical life that we are here in. Order is the arrangement of things in our life be it in the natural as well as in the, as well as on the spiritual side of our life. 
Sometimes we may not have, a person may not have their spiritual life in order, but yet they are expecting God to do what he said he would do. Or you could ask a person who does not have their spiritual uh, life in order, to, you, can ask, you, you could ask them the question, uh, well, do you believe God wants you to have it? And they say, sure, I, I believe that. That's what the word says. He wants to give it to me. So the next question then, sometimes it would come to, to, to us, well, how come you hadn't got them? Well, the reason is the arrangement and the order of our spiritual life is lacking. And you know, sometimes our spiritual life can get out of order and we don't even know it. We have, be we have become hardened. I don't know if that's a good word, but, but our conscience has become hardened to what is right and to what is wrong. And so when the conscience is hardened, disorder occurs in the life of that person. Disorder then keeps God, keeps God at a distance, as it were. Now, we know God's in us. We understand the new birth and those things. But it, it keeps his hand at a distance from working in our favor and working for us. So order is the arrangement of things in our life and we have order in the natural and there's also order in the spiritual side of life. Now what does order do for you? What does, you know, you could look at it from this standpoint. I got company coming this weekend and I've got to get this house in order. Anybody ever been there, done that? Well, what are you saying when you say that? That means that you have in your mind an arrangement of how you want things in your house. Company's coming. Well, let's put it this way on the spirit side. Jesus is coming. How do you want your house to be? How do I want my house to be, our house to be spiritually when he comes? Well, sometimes people say, well, I don't know, I never thought about that. I just, I'm just looking for him to take me up. And so, you know, you can kind of just, I don't want to use the word slough it off, but that's, I don't have another phrase to use here. Sometimes we just kind of slough it off. Don't think a lot about it. We don't think a lot about my spiritual house. We don't think a lot about it. But we'll think a lot about the order of our natural life and the things that, uh, that we have to do even directed by law and order. I may even remember that TV program from years ago. Dear Lord, am I the only one in the, in the house that's that old? So here's what order does for your life. Order will do something for your life. And here's what it'll do for your life. Order gives your life direction. Order, order produces control. You are in control of your life under God. Order is a, uh, where's it here? Order produces purpose in your life. There is a purpose for, the, for, the, for God's order to be in your life. God has a purpose for it. What is that purpose? The purpose is so that he can implement and perform his will in my life. Order, order allows him to do that. Order produces control. Order produces purpose. Order dis eliminates disorder. What is disorder? Do you know what the Bible calls disorder? If you look it up in the scripture, it calls disorder confusion. And when my life is in disorder, my life, I am confused where my life is concerned. So disorder produces uh, confusion. Uh, there is a lack of direction. There is a lack of purpose in my life when it is out of order. And so we see then that, uh, that uh, all of these things when I, that we've mentioned and, and more and others, 
when they are in our life, what does it produce? It doesn't produce God's blessing. It produces failure in our life. We fail of the grace of God. The Bible talks about that, that we can fail of the grace of God. Now, most people, I would think, I don't know, when I say most people, I haven't taken account on it, obviously, but it's people sometimes can think uh, that grace only uh, pertains to the work or, or on my part only per, uh, pertains to me accepting Christ and being saved or born again. But God's work of grace goes beyond that. That is the beginning of God's grace being, uh, being work in my life when I accepted Christ. It is by grace through faith. But yet my life goes on and God wants his grace to encircle me in all of my life. So sometimes uh, Paul in his writing said we could fail of the grace of God. In other words, we could fail to receive what grace has provided. And when you look at grace, the picture of, gra of grace is Jesus. If you wanna see grace, you're going to have to see Jesus. And if you're going to see Jesus, you've got to see what he has done for you. So I can fail of the grace of God, even though I have believed upon Jesus as my Savior. Now, what, what, what does that produce? That produces disorder. It brings my life into a state of confusion where my walk with God is concerned. And if I don't get it straight... If I don't understand how to get it straight or if I just let it go by me, what does it do? It produces a hardening of the heart, a hardening of the conscience where I no longer can distinguish, determine what's right and what's wrong in my life, what's right, what's wrong in the order of my life. And sometimes, you know, people carry around stuff that's out of order but they can't see it because their conscience has been hardened through not putting their life in proper order. But if you ask them how they're doing, they say, great. That's what they'll tell you. I'm, well, I'm doing good. Knowing all the while that there's something missing. There's just something missing in life. And so order then becomes very, very important. Psalm, the, the 50th Psalm and the 23rd verse says it like this. Whoso offereth praise glorifies me. God, the Holy Spirit pinning that through the, through the writer of this particular psalm, said whoever, whoso, whosoever, or, or whom, whoso offers praise glorifies me. Now that word glorify, there is the word honor. Now you ask some, you ask most anybody you want to ask, do you all honor God? Yeah. Do you ever praise God? No, I'm not into praise. I heard a preacher say that one time. He said, he said I, I'm, not, I'm just not into that praise stuff. But here it says, whoso offers praise glorifies, which is the word for honor in this, in this particular setting. Whoso offers praise honors God. Now, what does God say about that? If you honor me, I'm going to honor you. So don't, I'm going to make a statement, so don't throw a rock at me. A lot of people come to church and never enter into the praise service. Yeah. That didn't, didn't hurt too bad, did it? A lot of people come to church and they all through the praise service, you say, how do you know all that? I, because I watch. The Bible told me to take an oversight. But this is true. Now, I'm not condemning anybody. I'm just stating what is true. And people come to church all during the praise service, and this is, this is their posture. With the thought, boy, when's this going to be over? I come for the word. I'm a word person. I want the word. And so I'll be glad to get done with that loud music. And 
I never heard such beating on a drum in all my life. <laughs> See, what happened, you, you, you slip over into, the, into an area of being critical. So you begin to criticize. Lord, unless you drove out here on Wednesday night to hear this, didn't you? So you get critical. A spirit takes over. A critical spirit takes over. Disorder. A critical spirit does not bring order. A critical spirit brings disorder. And a lot of times, and this is not even in my note, this is free. A lot of times when people are sometimes when people's life is out of order, they look for people in the church to express their disorder to. They want you to know that they are unhappy. And so what do they do? They criticize. They criticize you. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. When I say you people, they criticize people. Criticize the preacher. Criticize the singers. Criticize the musicians. They just get critical. It's a critical spirit that brings disorder into a Christian's life. Disorder keeps the grace of God and the blessing of God out of your life, <clears throat> out of my life, out of our life. So watch what it says in, in Psalm 50, verse 23. Whosoever, that talks about anybody, all of us in here tonight are whosoever's. Whoso offers praise honors me. Now we're not going to delve very deeply into that, but there's certain order that God gives us to express our praise. Let me say that again. There's certain, there's certain order that God gives us to follow so that we express our praise, which is giving our honor to him. And you know, this ain't one of them. <laughs> this is not one of them. You see it all the time with Christians. You see it, I see it, I see it here, I see it there. And sometimes I see it in myself. I won't raise my hands. I don't want to do that. I won't get nothing out of that. What do I, there's disorder in that person's life. And they may look at you and say, wonder what they're happy about. Wonder what they got going on. I don't feel that way. See, all of this is a spirit. It's, it, these principalities and powers and spirits are working. And sometimes they work in us when we got a big smile on our face. Now, you don't have to quit smiling at you. So, <laughs> so notice what he said. And whoso offers praise, who glorifies or honors me, and to him that ordereth his conversation aright, who determines what's a right? God does. Whoso all, 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 who's, let me get it right. And to him that orders his conversation. Now, how many of you know what conversation is? Lifestyle. lifestyle. Whoso orders his lifestyle aright, I will show or I will cause him to see the salvation of God. God said if he does it right, I'm going to show him something. What's he going to show you? He's going to show you what his grace has brought to you, what he suffered and died for. He's going to show you some things where salvation is concerned. Amen. So the word ordereth in that verse of scripture, the word order, ordereth or well, orders or the King James says ordereth is defined as a road. It's defined as a course of life. It's defined as a manner of living. It's declared as a manner of action which produces purpose. What is my purpose? To please God. Isn't that our purpose? In other words, if I ask all of us in here tonight, isn't that what you want? You want to please God? Oh, yes. Oh, I want to please God. But yet, there's no order or there's some order that needs to be there.
Amen. All right, now let's go a little bit further since uh, you're intently listening to me tonight. Let's go. Uh, 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 the purpose, you, uh, up here in this, uh, in this 50, uh, 50 Psalm 23rd verse, says, and I will show the salvation. I will show him or show them the salvation of God. Now, the purpose of salvation here is what he will show us in this salvation. The purpose of salvation is so that we receive deliverance, we receive safety, we receive welfare, we receive prosperity, and we receive victory into our life. And we know this, that every Christian, every child of God is not experiencing that. There's folks in this church that's not experiencing that. Sometimes, sometimes that could affect any person that we're not receiving what God has made. Okay, let's go over into the New Testament and let's look at some order here. In Philippians chapter four and verse eight, here is an order. He who orders his conversation aright, Psalm says, God says, I will show I will manifest my salvation to them or to him. Let's look here in Philippians chapter four, verse eight. He says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, listen, you can't criticize somebody and have this on your mind. You can't express your criticism to, to other people and have this on your mind because this is order. The, what, he, what Paul is telling us here is order. So what does he say? Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. I mean, when you tell something on somebody, is it true? Think, think for a moment before we do it. Is it true? If it is, are you supposed to run and tell your neighbor? No, you're supposed to pray. We're supposed to love one another. So he said, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. That's order. It, what that is, that is where we order our words aright. Our thinking, we order our thinking aright. And all of that is in there. This is, the, this is to be the order of a believer's thinking for the purpose of seeing the salvation of God in their life. To see what salvation or to experience what salvation uh, brings to us through Christ. Now, let's go to Colossians chapter 2. We're talking about putting your life in God's order. And we certainly want to have it in order when he comes. But we, like, we need to have it in order before he gets here. Colossians chapter 2, verses 5 and 6. Paul writing to the church there in Colossians. He says, for though I be absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in the spirit joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith. Now, how did Paul see that? Paul was getting his report from those who were in charge of the, of the church, in this, in this case, the church at Colossae. He wasn't with them, but he knew by communication and, and writings of letters and things, he knew and had, had uh, uh, it was explained to him what was going on in the church. So he makes this statement. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. What's he saying? So walk in in the order that he has prescribed for his people to walk in. The steadfastness of our faith, now notice this, the steadfastness of our faith is connected to our lifestyle 
of order that eliminates the confusion of unbelief. Now notice he, he mentions that in, this, in these verses of scripture. Notice what he said. That he said, I am beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith. So what's he talking about? He's talking about steadfastness of your faith. He's talking about order in your steadfastness. He's talking about producing order in your faith through your ste uh, steadfastness. And the steadfastness of your faith in Christ, as you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, do what? So walk ye in him. So if we're walking in Christ, following Christ, walking in Christ, we are walking in proper order so that God can show me his salvation. According to Psalm 50, uh, yeah, Psalm 50. Yeah. So that God can show me his salvation. Folks, there's a lot of things perhaps that Christians are missing in their life that could be in their life or in our life or in my life if order, if my life is in order, if I order my life aright before God. So the steadfastness of our faith is connected to our lifestyle of order, our lifestyle of order that eliminates the confusion of unbelief. Thank you once again for being a part of our broadcast today. I'm always grateful to know that you're there and that you're watching and that the Lord is blessing you as you receive the word of the Lord. I want to pray with you uh, before we leave today. Father, I pray for the people. I pray, Lord, that your hand of blessing, your hand of deliverance, your hand that brings good things into their lives will be upon them and that they will receive that which you have provided for them in Christ Jesus and their life will be made better because of those things that you have done and that which they have received by faith from you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Thanks again. We always appreciate you being there, as I've already said, and we'll see you next time right here on Victorious Living. You've been watching Victorious Living with Pastor Charles Cowan. It's our hope that today's message has ministered to the need you have in your life. If you would like to receive today's message in its entirety, please call 1-800-842-7896. Or if you're in the Nashville area, call 615-226-2145 and ask for the product number on the screen. Visit us online at victoriousliving.org. If you're ever in the Nashville area, come and worship with us. Sundays at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. From Pastor Cowan and the Congregation of Faith is the Victory Church, we'll be looking for you next time right here on Victorious Living.